Hi, you're right. So this is video number four or five. Oh, I've lost track. Um, but anyway, this one's going to show you about uh, using buttons, essentially how to use buttons and switches, which are known as digital inputs, to control your advertising project. So these are our learning objectives. We're going to understand what a digital input sensor is um, and know the difference between an analog and a digital sensor because in the next video you're going to be learning about the analog ones. Uh, today we're just dealing with digital, which is our buttons. Uh, understand how to use the digital command in your program to detect a button press. So this is the name of the flowchart box you're going to use. Uh, but I want you to be able to detect both a button being pressed and a button being released. I think this is important. And then as always, to, you've got to be able to demonstrate to your teacher by the end of the lesson that you've written a flowchart that can control some lighting or sound pattern I uh, don't mind which, but only in response to you pressing or releasing a button. So you must have to push the button to start it or push the button to stop it. Um, this will make your programs uh, much more powerful and much more interesting that you're writing for your advertising project. Do remember that everything you're learning and practicing at the moment is to help you write your own flowchart in a couple of lessons time that's going to be for your advertising display that you're also making. Okay. Anyway, so that's our learning objectives. Now. Uh, We've done all about outputs in the last three videos. We're now learning about the input side of things. Uh, on this circuit that you guys are um, using, we've got three digital inputs, which are our buttons, these guys here, and they're connected to inputs D2, D6, and D7, so remember those numbers. And we've also got two analog ones, which we'll learn about in the next video. We've got a potentiometer, which is a posh word for a, a resistor that can be adjusted, a variable resistor, if you like. It's like a dial, like a volume control. And we've got a light sensor, a light dependent resistor. This is a resistor that well changes resistance with light and both of these are also sensors. But they are analog ones. That's what the A and the D stands for in these words here. Okay. So anyway, to show you the difference between analog and digital, um, I'll just bring up the webcam quickly. So what we've got here is the actual thing that you guys are building just laid out nice and neatly. These are your three buttons just screwed on and mounted with the screws. Uh, we've got a couple of other things on here as well I'll show you but all I've done and you can do this on your computer is when you've got your lead plugged in to your device you can go to this option over here called control device and that will allow you you might have noticed in the past you can turn lights on and off by clicking them here so I can turn all my lights on for instance and turn them all off again. Uh, do remember by the way zero means off and one means on but I can also detect things being pressed. So these ones at the top aren't clickable, but if I was to press input D2, for instance, you'll notice that it changes to a 1. And if I let go of it, it changes to a 0. So in programming terms, 1 means a button pressed, 0 means a button released. Okay, And I can show you that again for D6 and D7. So if I press D6, that one comes on. And if I press D7, the 1 means it's come on. Now, that's what a digital input is. Digital means it's an input or a sensor that only has two possible conditions. The two possible conditions here are on or off. There's no in between. It's either pushed or it's not pushed. Um, I hope that's fairly straightforward. Now the analog sensors that we'll be learning about next video, I will show you briefly. You can go to this option called calibrate sensor. Um, analog sensors are a bit different. They can have any reading or any value or setting between a minimum and a maximum. So for instance, this guy down here, AD1, you can see this little bar here. This is my light dependent resistor. Now in my living room, it's reading about 175. If it was a bright sunny day, it might be up in the 200s. But as I put my hand over it, you will hopefully see that number, there we go, gradually lowering. Okay, and if I put it in complete darkness, it goes right down below 50 or so. And if I take it away, it has a higher value. So this is what's known as an analog input. Analog means many, many different values. Um, this guy is my volume control. This is hooked up to sorry, AD0. And if I turn it one way, you'll see this dial turning up the top row. And if I turn it back the other, it will go down. Okay. So this also has many different states. Remember, the buttons, they're either pushed or they're not. Two states, the analog sensors, they can have many different values. Um, there are other types of sensor out there in the world, but we're only using these ones over here on your project. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Right, anyway, um, down to the programming part. 
what I've done here, um, this should be familiar to you now if you've watched the first three videos in the series. Um, I've got a subroutine and I've got another subroutine. Uh, this subroutine is called alternate lights and it makes basically those ones turn on and then the opposite ones turn on so it alternates between them and this one called inner line, no prizes for guessing, it turns on one light at a time in a sequence, kind of like the Knight Rider lights if you're old enough to know what Knight Rider, Knight Rider is. None of you are of course, but you, I bet you've still heard of the Hoff, David Hasselhoff. Anyway, um, so this program uh, all it will do is it will run alternate lights once and then it will run in a line once. So if I, uh, if I download this, I click run live, okay, we'll see once it's finished, alternate in a line, alternate in a line. So this might be the basis of kind of your advertising promotional display, you know, this could be using LEDs to draw attention to the product you're trying to sell. Now we're going to be interested in using buttons now so I don't want these patterns to start until I push a button that's the first thing I'm going to show you so how do we do that then well um, we're going to go to gallery and we're going to choose the uh, digital command if you remember back to our learning aims there we go understand how to use the digital command in your program that's the one we're going to be doing I'm just checking I'm still recording by the way yes I am um, I did this for like 10 minutes earlier and realized I wasn't even recording which is annoying anyway here we go so digital this is the box you want now this is one of only a few uh, flowchart commands in the program that has more than one arrow that you can connect to it so you start by connecting your arrow into it but you can have several arrows coming out I'll show you more about that in a second but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, double click on it and we've got here it's saying which input do you want to detect that's what this box means now you'll remember uh, we've got inputs connected to D2 D6 and D7 so I'm going to settle on D2 for now okay now you might also remember that when a button was pressed it counts as one and if a button's let go it counts as zero so I'm looking for a button to be pressed which means I need a one so put a caption in it will help so I'm asking is D2 switch pressed that's the question I'm asking now you should know there's two possible answers to that there's yes and there's no it's either pressed or it isn't so if I put my alternate lights under there you'll see a little Y for yes pops up and if I put my inner line here a little N for no pops up and I'll join those back round to the start and if you're on the ball you should realize that when I run this program if I'm not pushing the button it will run the pattern in a line and if I'm still not pushing it, it will keep repeating in a line. If I'm holding the button down, it will run alternate lights, alternate lights. Um, if you wanted this yes and no round the other way, by the way, you can right click on here, swap yes and no. That will do the opposite. I'll change it back. Okay, so just to prove this to you, I'm going to download it now to the, uh, to the box, or the circuit, I should say. And what we would expect, I'm not pushing the button at the moment, my finger is off it, so it's running in a line on a loop. If I hold the button down, we're now getting alternate, so it's following this path. So that's the first basics of how you use a switch. So I'm using a switch here to choose between two different flashing patterns. Okay, let go of it, and it goes back to in a line. So that's fairly straightforward. Now, um, you can make do this option as well. Um, you might remember that we also have switches connected to D6 and D7. Now, contrary to popular belief, if I was to do this and have three switches set as one, this doesn't mean that pressing any of my buttons will activate the lights. It means I have to hold down all three of them at the same time. So I'll put that in the... That, that's what this means, okay? You can't change that. So, this is asking, are all three switches pressed? okay and all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a no path there um, sorry I'm just gonna put back my inner line to run here and I'll download this and show you the effect that has I apologize for my sniffles by the way full of cold right so it's running in a line now because I've asked for all buttons to be pressed if I just push one of them nothing if I press the middle one it doesn't change doesn't change. Even if I press two of them together, still doesn't change. I have to press down all three buttons. There you go. There's like 
I'm, I am doing three <laughs> for it to work. So, and let go and it goes back. So you might find there's a use for that in your program. I don't know, maybe um, it's some kind of puzzle where the customer has to kind of touch three different parts of the advertising display at once to get a hidden lighting routine or a hidden message or a hidden sound effect or whatever. Uh, the choice is up to you. You're the programmer. I don't really care, but that's another option you can do. Um, a final thing you may decide you want to do is that you want to kind of do a program a bit like this. So I'm going to change this back to um, just one button being pressed and I'm actually going to do something completely different, sorry. I'm going to change this to look for, rather than a 1, look for a 0. Now, a 0 only happens when the button is let go of, so I'm going to change my caption to reflect that. This is asking, is the switch to released? Now, if it is, I'm going to run all to look lights, and if it's not released, I've just put an outputs box in there and I'm going to just make sure very well that everything is turned off if I'm not letting go of the button. So I'm looking for the opposite now. What this means is if I'm holding down the button all the lights will be off and if I let go of the button the lights will start running the alternate lights routine. So this might be if you're trying to um, advertise, I don't know, it could be maybe you're advertising a phone so the phone is resting and holding down the button and when you pick up the phone to go, oh, that's a very nice phone. Yeah, it's not actually, it's rubbish, it's broken. But um, if you're looking at the phone, as soon as you pick it up, the button is released and then the lights happen, okay? So this, just to show you can make switches respond both ways around. So let's hold that down. So I'm pressing the button down. So I'm holding the button at the moment and nothing's happening. That's because it's following this path over here. If I let go of the button now, the lights will flash, okay? So I'm going, ooh, very nice phone, yada, yada, yada. Put the phone back down. You get the idea. So that was back to my learning objective down here of knowing can you detect a button press and a button release. It's down to you to decide where you want to use that in your program. Um, I just thought I'd show you that as another option. Right, the last and final thing I'm going to show you is a common problem that happens with buttons that happens for the same reason we learned about back in the very first video. Okay, um, Right, I'm going to make a program now that basically I push the button once and I'll get alternate lights. I'll press it again and it'll change to the inner line pattern. I press it a third time and it'll turn all the lights off. So it's a little bit like one of those um, cheap LED bicycle lights you get. Every time you push the button it cycles through a different pattern. So, change this back. Is the button pressed? Remember your captions, they help. If no, go around and check. If yes, run alternate lights. And then I'm going to copy and paste that. And I'm going to do, right, is the switch pressed again? Um, copy and paste that, and I'm going to run in a line. So if it's pressed again, run in a line. If not, go back and run alternate lights. So this will, first time I press it, run alternate lights. If I haven't pressed the button a second time, it will carry on running alternate lights until I press it again and then I want to do a third press to turn all the lights off so I'm going to go is the switch pressed a third time if yes turn all the lights off and if it's not carry on running in a line and obviously join that back around to the start now this is one of those weird things uh, if you run this in the simulation it will probably work so just to show you um, press play so press it once to start alternate, okay? And you can see it's repeating them. Um, if I show the flowchart window, you can see it's repeating that pattern all day long, nice and nice and easy. If I press it again, so I've got to be, hold it down long enough. All right, it's running in a line, and it's just repeating that. You can see it going around this loop. Look, nope. And if I press it a third time the lights turn off. Well actually they didn't, they started again. Now that's exactly what's going to happen in real life. Um, sometimes what I'm saying is this glitch will work, will seem to work fine in here and you'll download it to the real pro, uh, flowchart and it won't work. Uh, just to show you on the real deal now, so let's download it. Okay, so nothing happening at the moment as we'd expect. I haven't pressed the button. Press it. 
it's running alternate lights and it's repeating that until I press it again sorry I didn't press it, there we go, in a line is running so it's following this loop now and now when I press it a third time we'd expect the lights to turn off and it to stop okay so I press it again but it's gone straight back to alternate now the reason that's happened, um, you might remember back to the first video when I said that the computer program runs a hell of a lot quicker than the human brain does. What's happening is when I push the button here for this box on the screen, it's going, turn the lights off, and before my measly human brain has even had a chance to tell my finger to take the f off the button again, it's gone, hang on, the button's still being held down go to alternate lights. So basically my reactions are not as quick as the program. That's what's happening. I can't take my finger off quick enough for it not to detect the button being pressed again. I hope that made some sense, but just trust me, if your program appears to be doing weird things, it's to do with that. Now there's an easy fix and then there's the proper fix. The easy fix is go, oh well, I know, I'll just put a wait in there. Let's have, sorry, a wait of say two seconds. Let's go and download that that will give me two seconds to take my finger off the button before detecting if the button's pressed again alright so yeah and nine out of ten times that will work so I press it alternate press it again there we go in a line press it again one two I had two seconds to take my finger off and yeah that seems to have cured it that isn't the best way of doing it the problem with this is you don't know what your customer is going to do you have gotta assume the customer or the person in the shop is an idiot they will hold the button down a long time or a short time you just don't know and if they hold it down more than two seconds this method will also fail so the correct programming way to do this is a little bit harder to understand but it just involves using another decision box so I'm gonna get a digital box in here and this one sorry I'm gonna to set to look for the button being let go of so I'm saying has button been released. Remember a red zero means button is off. If it has I will turn the lights off and if it's not I will loop to here. What this will do and you'll see is it will have the effect of I press the button to cancel until I've also let go of that button it gets stuck in an infinite loop here. That means I have to physically press and let go, press and let go before it will turn the lights off and go back round to the start. This is the professional proper solution to it. Okay, so run live. We'll just prove it works, and then that's pretty much the end of the video. All right, so press once, alternate. Press the second time in a line. Press the third time, and I'm holding the button down. So what that must mean is it's stuck. It's going. Has it been let go? Has it been let go? No, no, no. And I let go. Yes okay and now I'm back to here and I have to physically take my hand off and put it back on again to start over I hope that made sense um, if it didn't watch the video again uh, try it maybe that will make more sense or perhaps ask your teacher if you really need clarification if you don't understand it the best thing you can do is a lot of coders and programmers do is just go well I don't get it but I know this bit of code works so I'll copy it anyway <laughs> That's the other approach to have a look at the, um, on how to do it. So just trust me, if you're getting weird things going on, it's probably because of that. Right, that about sums up digital sensors and switches, just to recap them. Uh, get rid of that. Um, we know a digital a button is a type of digital switch because it's either on or it's off. It has two states. We know the difference between analog and digital. Analog sensors can have many different values, like the light sensor, as we saw in the demo at the start. You've seen how to use the digital command. We use a 1 or a green 1 to detect a button press and a red 0 to detect a button release. And then the be able bit, well that's down to you. Use what I've shown you in the video. Show your teacher that you can get your lights and sound, because you've learned how to do that as well now, responding to buttons being pressed and released. If you can hook all this into your program, um, you're already going to be onto a much higher level and get a much higher grade for your programming advertising project when you get round to it. All right, the more of these things I've shown you in the video that you can put into it, the higher the grade you will get.